Welcome to our hematology lab. So, this is the overall view of the lab. First of all, reception counter. As we enter the room, on the left side, there will be the receiving counter and table. And there are two monitors that are connected to the hospital information system. The samples will be organized on this bench work and there are two cabinets to store files and documents. So this is the reception area. Moving on to the next room. This is the FPC and FPP room. The tests being done here are full blood count and full blood pictures. As we enter the room, the first section is the FPC section and there are two monitors and over here is the FPC machine that is called FPC Analyzer Sysmax XN1000. It is fully automated. The machine will run the test and the result will appear on the monitor. Sysmax XN1000 can run around 100 samples per hour. These are slide and files cabinet and on the other corner is the FPP section. This section is done by staining and smearing for blood samples. They are automated and semi-automated slide markers. And this is the FPP machine. It is called Umizen H2 500 Analyzer. And this machine can produce 120 slides per hour. That's the FPC and FPP room. Next, this is the coagulation room. In this section, all the coagulation tests are being done. As we enter, on the left side, there are two coagulation machines, which is called Sysmax CS5100 system. Next is the Strack ESR Auto Plus machine. In the middle of the lab, there are workbenches and also cabinets on top and below there are also working preparation area next we move on to G6PD and hemoglobin analysis section there are two main tests carried out in this section which are fluorescent spot test FST and HbA1c test. The purpose of FSD is to screen the presence of G6PD enzyme in the newborns. It can also help in assisting the physician to find the cause of hemolytic anemia. The instrument involved in fluorescent spot tests is spectroline which consists of UV lamp and fluorescent analysis cabinet. If the sample appears fluorescent under UV light, then the patient has adequate level of G6PD enzyme. Meanwhile, if the sample does not appear fluorescent, then the patient has G6PD deficiency. On the other hand, HbA1c test is carried out to identify and monitor the average blood glucose level over the past 2 to 3 months in diabetic patients. It also can be carried out to diagnose type 2 diabetes. HbA1c test is carried out by High Performance Liquid Chromatography HPLC. The instrument involved is Adams A1c HA8180 V which is a fully automated HPLC machine that can detect the presence of HbA1c quantitatively. Next is the bone marrow section. This section consists of culture room, workbench, dark room and microscope room. In this section, examination of the bone marrow aspirate and trephine biopsy is essential for the diagnosis of bone marrow disorders. Collection of bone marrow aspirate from the patient indicate the examination of bone marrow. MGG and right staining are carried out for bone marrow microscopic examination. For further tests, bone marrow samples are used to do cytogenetics and fish tests. Culture room with biosafety cabinet class 2 
is used for cell culture to investigate the bone marrow disorder in cell lines. Meanwhile, the duck room is usually used to carry out FISH fish study. Next, we move to flow cytometry section. Flow cytometry is a method used to detect, identify, and count specific cells. It can identify particular components within cells. Examples of tests that are done by flow cytometry are reticulocyte count, CD4 count, HL8 testing, platelet function tests, immunophenotyping, and PNAH investigation. There are two flow cytometry machines placed in this section. Using these machines, cells are suspended in a liquid stream and passed through a laser light beam in a single fashion. The interaction with the light is measured by an electronic detection apparatus as light scatter and fluorescent intensity. A computer is placed right next to the flow cytometry machines to enable easy access for information processing. This flow cytometry section can fit up onto 5 people. Next is the storage section. It consists of three storage rooms which are cold room, chemical room and common room. Cold room has the function to store reagents and patient sample. It is divided into two compartments which are 4 degrees Celsius compartment and negative 20 degrees Celsius compartment. The 4 degrees Celsius compartment normally dedicated to store patient samples such as mirror aspirates, blood and plasma along with certain reagents that are required to be stored under this temperature. Meanwhile, negative 20 degrees Celsius compartment is dedicated to store patient serum and urine as well as feces if requested upon fecal or cold blood tests. Next, we move on to chemical room. This room is provided for chemical reagent storage purpose. This room is equipped with shower station, sink and fire extinguisher for safety purpose. Each type of chemicals are segregated into different cabinet to prevent any hazardous chemical reactions. Each cabinet should be labeled with its own hazard label. Spill agent which are stored within the spill cabinet is also provided to treat chemical spills within the storage room and laboratory. The last room for storage section is the common store room. The room is allocated to store equipment supplies such as stationaries, beakers, pipettes and others. Each cabinet in this room is labelled accordingly. The laboratory is also equipped with various facilities. One of it is the on-call room. This room is provided for staff to rest upon their on-call duty. Prayer rooms are also provided for both female and male workers. Next to the prayer room is the toilet for the staffs. So this is the medical officer's room. Next to it is the head of department's room. And at the end of the corner is the science officer's room. At the opposite of these three rooms, there is the pantry room. Besides the pantry room, there is the meeting or discussion room. There's a long meeting table which is surrounded by cabinet. 
Next to the meeting room is the dark room. Dark room are used in the examination of bone aspirate for cytogenetics testing, especially for fish tests. In the microscope room, microscopic examination being carried out from blood and bone marrow samples. This is the locker room. It is used to keep personal belongings. Hematology laboratory is considered as laboratory with biosafety level 2 BSL2. There are a few safety measures taken upon designing this laboratory. Firstly, the laboratory is built with two emergency exits located at the back of the laboratory. It is also equipped with emergency shower and eye wash to minimize the effect of accident exposure to chemicals. Spill agents are also provided to treat small chemical spills. If the chemical spill is in a large amount and it is a toxic chemical, all occupants of the laboratory should be evacuated immediately. Hazardous chemicals used in the laboratory are segregated in different cabinets. Each cabinet are labeled with its respective hazard label.